buy up real estate and rent out to a growing class of permanent tenants, people who may never be able to afford a home. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, hands, love, love hand movement. Hey, what's the matter for you? I don't know, I doubt he's Italian, but hey. What's up everyone, how you doing today? We're gonna to be analyzing uh, politicians and obviously it's a heated time in our world because of lockdowns and COVID and vaccines and people making good decisions, bad decisions. But what I wanna do is I wanna just discuss on a communication level um, what, what makes a good speaker and why sometimes people don't trust politicians or sometimes don't trust certain people based off maybe the words sound good but the message that they're saying is the reason why, like in Canada, we have literally trucks driving down highways and everywhere, you know, literally saying F Trudeau. But there's a reason for that. And obviously we, we can talk about, uh, you know, um, decisions he's made and that people are just na are naturally going to be very political and, and choose one side over the other. But I think um, it's a very heated time in Canada right now. And I think there's certain things that he does that really pisses people off. Um, so I'm not choosing left or right. Um, this is just me analyzing what um, speakers in this video do. So I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about Pierre uh, Polivier. I hope I said that name right. I'm going to be talking about um, a video having Aaron O'Toole and talk with Justin Trudeau. And uh, so let's get into it. Let's start off with uh, a debate between Justin Trudeau and um, Aaron O'Toole back in, um, yeah, so January 31st. So literally about a week, a week and a half ago. Fortunately, Aaron, not unfortunately, but Aaron O'Toole is obviously not the, uh, the main leader anymore of the uh, Conservative Party, but um, it's, a, it's a cool discussion, so let's watch it. Yeah, bud. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to begin by sending best wishes to the Prime Minister and his children that are dealing with COVID-19. As a family that had COVID in the home, I wish them a speedy recovery. Here, here, here. Canadian manufacturer. <laughs> Only Canadians will say here, here. <laughs> the Federation of Independent Business, the Chamber of Commerce, the Conservative Opposition, thousands of truckers for over a month have proposed solutions to the trucking shortage in Canada and the supply chain crisis, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister has ignored this crisis and even worse, he calls names for people that are raising... Again, we're, we're, we're not talking politics here. I'm talking about body language and communication. Again, you can hear in his voice, loud... He's serious. This matters a lot. His, his, his hands are moving around. He's got on his face. I'm not messing around, Mr. Speaker, or Mr. whoever he's talking to. Um, that gets everyone engaged. That, that gets everyone listening um, to what he has to say. And it, it just shows like uh, what he's talking about, he's passionate about. Um, and that's, that's very key um, as a great speaker. Are raising these very issues. So Mr. Speaker, my question is simple. Will the Prime Minister move past the division and agree to meet with some of the truckers impacted by his federal regulations? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the science is very clear. The best way through this pandemic is to get people vaccinated. That's how we end the disruptions to our supply chains caused by this global pandemic. That's how we get back to the things we love to do. That's why we've been unequivocal on the need to get vaccinated. And great news, Canadians across the country stepped up. Almost Like when he goes, Canadians need to step up. Like in a, in a genuine conversation, a lot of people don't really do that. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be critiquing, you know, Trudeau just a little bit here, um, but I just feel like as people, we have really good gut instincts of I like this person or I don't like that person. And right off the bat, I don't know if this was, this is just, if, if this is just how he talks naturally, I can see why that may annoy people or almost like, I don't really believe what he's saying. That's all I see. It's almost like, I don't know if I really believe in what he's talking about right now. I don't know if I can really buy into it. Um, so what that does is it starts to annoy people over time because it's like, is he being honest or is he, is he, just, lie, is he just being an actor and lying to my face? 
Um, you know, whereas with O'Toole, he's loud, he's in your face. He's like, this is what, this is what I believe. And we, you can hear it in my voice. That's what makes a, a good speaker, a good believable. There's conviction in his voice. And I think with Trudeau, just right off the bat, I don't hear the real conviction in his voice. Obviously, you know, he's prime minister for a reason. So there's, there's good aspects of him, but that's just my one critique right off the bat. Almost 90% of Canadians are vaccinated, including almost 90% of truckers, because we know that the biggest disruption to our supply chains happen. On the good side, he's making great eye contact. <laughs> you know, he's staring, staring, staring at the camera the whole time. Um, and, and on a conviction level, on a, hey, this, this, this matters to me, um, he's staring at the camera lens, and that is how he's getting his point across um, at the same time. Again, I'm not here to critique anyone of left versus right. It's, I'm looking at speakers as a whole. Supply chains happens uh, when people catch COVID. That's why vaccinations are the way through it, and we're going to continue to be unequivocal about that. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, when you ignore and divide a country when it needs to be united, that's not leadership, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister knows that the voices of a few don't represent the millions of Canadians who are worried. Millions of Canadians over two years have seen their lives upended, their children's mental health impacted. Businesses fail, Mr. Speaker. The nation being stretched in our social fabric. Vaccines are critically important. Whether you're left or right, as he's talking, naturally you will be engaged. You know, naturally. You start to buy into what he's saying. You start to say, wow, um, whatever he's talking about seems very important to him. And naturally you need that. You need that part of who you are as a speaker. And you know, I, as I've worked with many people who have stuttered over the years, you know, it, it's, it's always going back to, it doesn't matter about if you stutter, if you say um, or if you repeat words, or if you, sometimes the grammar's off. But as long as you're passionate about what you're saying and the tonality is there and you actually believe in what you're talking about, that's how the audience gets engaged. These are critically important, but as the Prime Minister's own COVID diagnosis demonstrates after three vaccinations, we have to use all tools, Mr. Speaker, to get our life back to normal. When is life getting back to normal, Mr. Speaker? Right? Love that at the end. Love that, right? Um, I don't really know too much about how these, I don't know if you want to call it a debate in Parliament Hill, um, but I, 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 I'm still kind of confused of why everyone <laughs> stands up and starts clapping. I love it. I think it hypes up the whole crew, but so funny. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. <laughs> And all Canadians know how frustrating it is to have to deal with this pandemic uh, for now two years uh, and ongoing. So I'm guessing if I, if I was talking to Justin Trudeau, I'm like, why did you respond like that? I think he would say something like, well, I'm just keeping my composure. Just because O'Toole's freaking out doesn't mean I have to freak out. There's good and bads to that. It, it, you know, um, if you want to be a good leader, you keep your composure. You go, I know the other person's freaking out. I'm going to be calm. But even like the face that he has right now, on paper, it almost looks like he's laughing at him. Literally, like I, I, I didn't plan this screenshot. But it's almost like I'm laughing at you. Um, whether he feels like that or not, that's how some people are going to look at that as. Does this guy actually care about what I'm saying? Or is he just laughing at me and saying, okay, buddy, you know, uh, good luck with your tamper tantrum. Um, I'm the guy in charge. And when you come from that, you're not being truly empathetic. And I think what Trudeau was trying to do at times is he's trying to be empathetic, but I don't think, based off me being a Canadian and how our generation, even the protests in Ottawa right now and the protests in downtown Toronto, I'm, it's safe to say he's pissed off a good chunk of people, right? And I don't think it's just because of the hard restrictions or we, you know, you know, we've had the hardest restrictions in North America. I think it's things like this where I've been on TikTok and people will be scrolling, um, or I'll, I'll, I'll be scrolling videos on TikTok and some guy would be watching this video and they'll be like, F Trudeau, like with anger in their hearts. <laughs> um, because I think it's things like this, where literally, you know, he's, he's got his baby blue eyes out 
and he's smiling, and uh, he, you know, he's, it's fake. It, it, and I'm not saying, he, he might not feel like it's fake. He may feel like, well, this is just how I am. I'm, uh, you know, I was an arts teacher, or you know, I'm, I, I talk very dramatic. But some people may take it the wrong way. Whereas, you know, if you, got, if you saw my Grant Cardone video, you could tell like Grant is being serious. I'm here for business. I understand what you're saying. And I, and I hear your point of view. That would be someone more empathetic, more sympathetic. Where I don't think people are getting that from him. I think it's almost like, okay, O'Toole, enough. Hurry up with your temper tantrum. You, you can say all that you want. I'm the guy in charge. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I think that's what comes out of it. But, but Canadians also have never been so united in stepping up. Almost 90% of Canadians have been vaccinated. And that means uh, they are protecting our frontline health workers. They are making sure that we're getting through this as best we possibly can. It is that unity of Canadians, that nature that we have of being there for each other that has been on such display through this pandemic. Uh, yes, there are people who are still hesitant, and yes, there are people... The leader of the opposition. Monsieur the President. See, I think at some level, I think he was dodging some of the questions, right? And again, I'm looking at the point of view of why are Canadians, why are some Canadians so upset? And we can talk about politics, but that, that isn't it. I think he's just, he's not really answering the question head on. Um, and I think he's just talking about people just need to get vaccinated. So what that does to people is it kind of gets them going. Um, and I think that's why some people uh, have some anger in their hearts with uh, Mr. Trudeau. Um, so. That's one aspect. Another video I want to talk about too is uh, a new guy. Um, his name is Pierre Polivier. And, and I want to talk about his video. I'm, I'm going to critique it. I'm going to give you the goods, the bads, um, kind of um, my two cents on how the video went as a whole. Okay, let's watch it. Big and bossy. They're spending more than at any time since World War II. So they control more of what you earn and you control less. They caused inflation by borrowing and printing a half trillion dollars, which has ballooned the assets of the billionaires, the debts of our children, and the cost of living of the working class. Over half of families now say they struggle just to feed themselves, and more 30-year-olds live in their parents' basements because they can't afford the now typical cost of a home, $800,000. Meanwhile, a small financial elite with access to all that printed. Right off the bat, um, you just tell. Hands on the table, great eye contact, voice nice and deep. And he's like, I'm going to be talking about something that's very serious. Um, naturally, he just, he just captures your attention. Um, that's why I think this is, this is actually a pretty good video um, from, from Pierre as a whole. Did money buy up real estate, and rent out to a growing class of permanent tenants, people who may never be able to afford a home. And when people speak... If you've seen any of my videos in the past, hands, love, love hand movement. And that, that very subtle, hey, what's the matter for you? I don't know, I doubt he's Italian, but hey! Um, <laughs> um, that just, again, a bad speaker, someone who just keeps the same body position and the same tone the whole time. And just, I want to get out my words and this is what I'm going to say and I'm going to get this. Like, that isn't a good, a, a good speaker. It's a 738.55 rule. In communication, 7% are just the words you say. 38% is the tonality and 55% is the body language. So you, you, even the way he's dressed, a, a great, I mean, I'm not dressed amazingly, but you can tell, like as, as a politician, um, you want to win the hearts of everyone or you want to get your message across all across the country. Dressed the part, looked the part. You know, his, his hair looks great. Um, yeah, just that'd be, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd be my two cents. People speak up, the powerful clamp down. They silence and slander anyone who dares dissent, including with laws censoring what you see and say online. Using COVID as a political opportunity, the Trudeau government has attacked small businesses, truckers, and other hardworking Canadians. They target law-abiding hunters and farmers 
while letting gangsters and gun smugglers run free. See, here's the problem. Trudeau thinks he's your boss. He's got it backwards. You are the boss. That's why I'm running for president. A great speaker as a whole too, knows how to empower um, his audience. So just that very subtle thing, and I know he kind of talks about it a little bit more, but that, but that whole thing about you're the boss, um, you know, as an audience, being motivated is important at some level. Being empowered by the speaker is very important. And that's, that's one of the things that I notice in this video is he empowers the person as like, you're in control, you're the boss. And he almost has that smile to it is like, like, it's all good, man. You're the boss. You're in control. And naturally, as the viewer, locks you in a little bit more. So he comes off being serious. He's, he doesn't have the, the Grant Cardone style where he's like, come on, man, let's get it. Because I think as a politician, that might not align. Um, maybe as a salesperson, that aligns with them. But as a politician, he comes off, he's like, look, I'm being serious. I want to make change in this world. I want to make an impact. I want you to be the boss. There's a lot going on, da, da, da. So he has that professional tone to him um, that I think makes this video a good video. For Prime Minister, to put you back in charge of your life, together, we will make Canadians the freest people on earth with freedom to build a business without red tape or heavy tax, freedom to keep the fruits of your labor and share them with loved ones and neighbors, freedom from the invisible thief of inflation, freedom. Just that little smile there. It's subtle, but it's important, right? When you're serious the whole time, it's just not necessary. Just like if you're smiling all the time, it's not necessary. Just that, that switch, right? It's entertaining. So that, that little smile that he puts on is, it's like a breath of fresh air at some level. And all speakers do it, right? You, no, you, you don't do it in a way where it's almost like you're laughing at the person. This is a very serious video at some level, but he has that smile of like, hey, it's gonna be good though. We're gonna figure this out. And doing that is yeah, just what is what makes him a good speaker. Freedom to raise your kids with your values. Freedom to make your own health and vaccine choices. Freedom to speak without fear and freedom to worship God in your own way. See, in a free country, smaller government makes room for bigger citizens. People have room to take responsibility for themselves and each other. Neighbors care for neighbors. A job is the best anti-poverty program. And family and community are the best safety net. Now, the people with power, the media, interest groups, corporate giants, government authorities, will fight tooth and nail to keep on top. So it won't be easy. But easy street leads to a dead end and hard roads lead to the best destinations. Our destination is a Canada where the government is servant, not master. As Henley might say, you are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your soul. I like that line. Yeah, I, I think that's, I think, I think he does a great, um, obviously for him saying he's gonna be uh, running for, for prime minister, I don't think it's, it's gonna happen until like 2025, <laughs> but, um, I just think it's just, it's just a solid video. You know, with a video like that, it's not, it's, it's not meant to be casual. So in videos like this where I, I'm giving my reaction, it's more casual, so I might say, um, and you know, and I think, and I'm taking my time. That, he has a prepared script there of like, this is the things I wanna say. I wanna end it off with the, with the quote with Henley. Um, I wanna hit certain points, but just overall, as a politician, he gets his message across. He understands his audience, he's serious, but he also smiles as like, hey, it's all gonna be good. I think that allows him to be a solid speaker and that's what makes this video so good. So, I hope you guys enjoyed how I reacted to both of these videos. Um, you know, with politics, it can always be funny. Um, again, this video was just meant to, to, to look at the character, to look at the speaker, to look at what they're saying, not if what they're saying is right, what they're saying is wrong, it doesn't matter. It's about, especially as a politician, a lot of it is, hey, I'm like a actor. I'm like a, you have to buy into me. You have to buy into the words I'm saying. Do you trust me? 
Um, I gave you my two cents of O'Toole, Justin Trudeau, and uh, Pierre. Um, super curious about what you have to say. I know politics, people are gonna have a lot of opinions. I wanna hear them, tell me. You know, if you want me to react to different videos, whether it's, you know, for Canadian politics with Jag Meat or other, or maybe people in the Green Party, or we can talk about, you know, people, you know, or um, US politics like Biden and Trump and whoever else, you know, it's meant to not offend anyone. It's meant to say, hey, let's, let's break these people down. What makes them good? What makes them attractive? How did Trump get into office? How did he go from The Apprentice to now the president? How did, how did Biden, from what he's done over you know, the 40 years of politics that he's been in, how did he get into his position? What did he do? What, what worked for Biden? What didn't work for Biden? So um, super curious about what you guys have to say. That is my two cents on Cana some Canadian politicians. Yeah.